Okay, so this will be the third and final episode in our little mini-series about geometry. So for this episode, we're going to talk specifically about the sphere class. Now this will be the final class we implement, for now at least, in terms of um, geometry. So after this episode, we will go back to the main loop and we will create an image with a couple spheres in a plane using orthographic projection. So let's just jump right into it and create a class called the sphere. So what we want is to be able to create a sphere and we can do that mathematically with a 3D point called the center as well as a double value that describes the radius of the sphere. With these two values we have the mathematical makings of a sphere. So of course what we want is a constructor to define the sphere. So point 3D, center, double radius, and then a color. We will, like I said previously, swap this value out later for a material object. So this dot center equals new point 3D center. This dot radius equals radius. And this dot color equals new color and pass in color. Did I not import? Okay. Oh, that's right. I keep doing that. So we have to make sure to extend this from the geometric object base class that we created. So now what we need to do is create our hit function. So we can define a sphere actually quite easily in a way that conforms to um, plugging in our ray value. So we can do this. So what this is saying is that if you take a point on the sphere and you subtract it from the center of that sphere and you dot it with that same value, you will get um, the square of the radius. Now this makes sense because if you are dotting something with the exact same thing, you are just going to get its square. So in this case, we can isolate this to be the point on the sphere would be where the ray intersects. So we could plug in the origin plus the distance on that direction vector. And then we could dot it with that exact same value. Subtract it from the radius squared, and this would equal zero. So that is the mathematical foundation for finding the intersection between a ray and a sphere. So what we want to do now is isolate T. And what we can see from doing that is what we have is a quadratic equation. Uh, let's see. So we isolate this. What else do we have? Um, let's see. So it would be 2 times the ray origin, and then dotted with D again, and then this would be T. So we isolate this, and then finally we get dotted with O minus C. Oops. What's going on here? Minus R squared and then this all equals zero so what you can see what we did here is we took each piece and we distributed it over and we came out with each part of the quadratic equation which allows us to use the simple form uh, what is it negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a 
that everyone learned in elementary school, middle school, whatever it was. So from here, we know that this first piece is A. So what we can actually do is define a value, double A equals um, ray dot direction dot ray dot direction. So that gives us the first value A, which is the squared portion. Then we can define B as two times ray dot origin minus or er, dot sub and this would be center and then dot that with ray dot direction so that gives us the B portion and then finally we want C which is ray dot origin subtracted from the center and then dotted with ray dot origin subtracted from the center and then finally subtract radius squared from that so that gives us both a b and c but now we need to solve the quadratic equation so we have these values what we also want is the discriminant which is b squared minus 4 times a times c. So that gives us the discriminant. So now what we can do with this is if the discriminant, that's the value under the square root, if that is less than 0, that cannot happen. You cannot have a negative value underneath the square root. So we know that the ray will never intersect the sphere. So we can test for that condition. We can say if discriminant is less than 0.0, .0 return 0.0. .0. So that indicates that it did not hit. Otherwise, we can find the value for t, which is equal to negative b minus, we'll split this out a little bit, negative b minus math dot square root the discriminant and then divide this by 4 or 2 times a. Now we should probably use parentheses here so that we get the order of operations correct. We want all of this in the numerator to take place first. So we will have it like that. So that gives us the value for t. Now the reason I chose negative instead of positive here is because the negative value is the smaller or the closest value. So what we want to finally do is check if t is greater than that predefined arbitrarily small value. Return t. Otherwise, we want to return 0.0. .0. That will indicate that there was no intersection. So that is the sum total of the sphere class. We have the center, a radius, which mathematically defines our sphere class, as well as a constructor, which allows us to create a unique sphere in space. And then we have our hit method, which allows us to mathematically determine first whether or not the ray intersects a sphere, and if it does, where it intersects. So in the next episode, we will actually utilize both the sphere and the plane class to create an image that actually has something interesting in it besides noise. So that's it for this episode.